Okay, so uh, back in Poland, it's really early in the morning and I'm ready to head out on my new uh, antique road trip. So, uh, one interesting thing today is I'm going to be taking uh, that thing. And uh, I've been thinking about getting one because uh, it's kind of necessary when you go on road trips and you're trying to transport the stuff that you're getting. Uh, I borrowed this from a friend to see how I like it and if I'm going to be able to uh, manage something similar here in Europe because. Uh, I've only been driving in Europe a short time, and uh, it's kind of an adventure, uh, like with everything else. So, okay, so let's get going and uh, see what we can find. about this little lens flare thing lightly going on. I think the lens is cracked on this phone. Uh, so I just picked up my first item of the day and uh, it's actually my first unique kind of story. So I saw this little shelf here and uh, it's really cool industrial little shelf and it had uh, a lamp on it that looked like uh, those uh, Fostoria industrial lights. And when I showed up to pick up the item, uh, it's made in Chicago, Illinois, and it's uh, really old, and uh, that's a Fostoria light. So uh, those are things that are kind of sought after back home. And the guy said that this was actually in Sweden, and then he imported it uh, with some other equipment uh, here to Poland. And uh, what do you know, it's going back to Chicago, Illinois. Okay, uh, hello everybody. Uh, we're back and it is the next day. And uh, I got in really late yesterday, so I decided that uh, I would just wait till this morning when the sun was out and I could uh, share with you some of the stuff that I picked out. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention was that uh, for a long time I've really been interested in doing this. Wow, those birds are really loud. Uh, I've been interested in doing this and I watched so many YouTube videos about anything that uh, was connected with uh, antiques, especially European antiques and acquiring them and learning about uh, shipping and exporting and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I kind of got YouTube burnout. I wasn't really finding any more new and fresh and quality information. And uh, yesterday I was on the road for the first time and I was actually driving to get stuff and uh, I had such, uh, you know, a really big sense of satisfaction. It was really cool to be out on the road and uh, getting stuff. So finally moving forward with this uh, dream. So um, one other thing that I wanted to mention was that uh, uh, a lot of people when they think about urine, European <laughs> urine antiques, urine antiques, European antiques, uh, they're thinking about like Rococo style stuff and golden mirrors and all that kind of stuff. And uh, while there is a lot of that over the, over here, uh, I'm more interested in kind of like more industrial, more kind of uh, loft style stuff that uh, average people can just put in their uh, apartment as a single piece. And um, so one of the things that I'm trying to do is think ahead a little bit about the uh, booth that I'm gonna set up at the antique show. And I know that I need a lot of surfaces. So uh, this first, trip was more about finding some kind of surfaces that I could use, some tables, that kind of thing that I could uh, not only use in the booth to put the merchandise on, but at the same time they would also be for sale. So they could uh, uh, be sold. Oh, there goes the dog. Let's grab the tennis ball. So uh, yeah, so these uh, things that I show you are going to be kind of cool, really interesting, uh, but uh, they're not like real premium European antiques. So one of them's, actually a couple of them are really cool. Uh, but I just wanna set your expectations and uh, I've got some industrial carts and uh, a few other things that I wanted to share with you. And uh, overall, it was a great trip. And uh, let's go check out what I got. 
So if you've been to the channel before, uh, in one of my previous videos, I uh, had gotten one of these uh, carts and brought it back. And I just thought it was really super cool. And um, I also kind of was thinking that it would be great for a retail location for displaying product on. And with these carts, uh, they're on wheels. And uh, they were so cheap, I paid about $25 per cart. So they're super heavy industrial carts. Um, just even as a functional cart, picking it up for 25 bucks, uh, and this is like heavy, heavy gauge steel. So uh, the quality is there. And uh, yeah, I thought they're cool because you could put uh, inventory in your store on any of these three shelves. Or you can pop up these uh, these top ones and put some advertising or some pricing or uh, some design work on there. So uh, I went. The first one that I picked up was 25 bucks, and I just kept thinking about it and thinking about it. And I I called the guy at 25 dollars per cart. I said, uh, go ahead and give me four more. So I have a set of five, and I'd love to find a, a retail location where I can just sell all five to the sellers. So uh, earlier in the video, uh, I mentioned that uh, I bought a piece that didn't actually come from uh, where I thought it was. And uh, I want to show that to you again here. This uh, industrial cart here, another cool surface. And it was listed online and it said, uh, comes with old lamp on it. And I remember looking at it and thinking, that looks like a, a Fostoria lamp. And uh, it's really heavy duty, super quality. And I thought, well, maybe that's like, a, you know, they stole a patent and they just made a copy or something here in Europe. Uh, when I got there, I grabbed this, which uh, anybody can recognize as an American uh, electric plug. Uh, and then when I started looking at the uh, cart, I saw this, uh, I don't know if you can see that because the sun's on the other side. Pollard uh, made in Chicago. So uh, I'm gonna have to do a little research and find out what decade that came from. Uh, it's at least mid-century, maybe maybe a little bit earlier, I'm not sure, but it's definitely from a time when they used uh, very quality materials. So uh, love the color, it's got uh, patina to it. And the only thing I need to do is um, get rid of this sticker and give it some lacquer and then do some like cutting board or really quality wooden inserts uh, on each of the uh, shelves. And uh, fix up the lamp a little bit here, tighten it down, and uh, it is ready to go. It's perfect. The story behind it is uh, he got it from, I think I said earlier, Sweden. I have to look back early in the video what I said. Uh, he imported it to Poland actually, because he buys tools and rehabs them and then resells the tools. And this was just something in a factory buyout that he got. And uh, that's why he really wasn't interested in the lamp or anything. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, so actually when I stopped to buy some of these other things, the other guys that I was buying from saw that and they were really interested in it. So uh, yeah, I can see that other people appreciate it as much as I do. So yeah, pretty cool. This guy, this yellow seat, uh, I bought this seat because it's uh, kind of industrial. Uh, it is height adjustable and it rotates and uh, it's a really cool yellow color. It's got some wear and age to it. Um, been repainted a couple times I can see, uh, but it's yellow and uh, I have a yellow military desk, which I'll, uh, I've talked about in a previous video. I'll insert a uh, picture of it here. And uh, I also have a yellow desk lamp. So I think the three of them together would be great for staging and uh, to sell as a uh, complete set. So that'll be really cool. That desk popped into my mind as soon as I saw the chair. More carts. And this is one of my favorite things from the trip. It is uh, an old Colt rack. And uh, it was in a German factory. So uh, the place that I bought it in Poland uh, is right on the Polish-German border. And those guys go across the border all the time. And uh, it's kind of funny because Polish people go to Germany to find stuff. And then German people like to come to Poland to find old stuff. So uh, I guess the grass is always greener on the other side. 
But uh, this is an old uh, coat rack and it's still got the uh, drip tray here. Uh, umbrellas would go in here, they would drip down into that tray and then you could uh, get rid of the water and your floor wouldn't get wet. But uh, yeah, it's ultra heavy duty, it's steel. The problem with it is that there were these big finials here and they were made of bronze. Uh, this heavy duty washer here is bronze. Somehow it survived uh, 100 years or 120 years. And uh, the one on that side is missing and then there would have been like a ball or some kind of figural element that was made out of bronze. And then down here, there are four as you can see, that's uh, threaded. So there would have been some kind of little finial there. And so I need to um, have something made or get that replaced in some way, but uh, it's industrial. I love it because it's industrial. It's not decorative. It's completely functional. Uh, it's got this kind of hand wired uh, cage in the center of it. Um, there are bronze uh, hardware fittings here. And uh, this is heavy gauge <clears throat> wrought steel and uh, beautiful patina and uh, super happy with that. Okay, so uh, before I show you the, the rest of the stuff, uh, something occurred to me that I wanted to share with you. Uh, like everybody else who's interested in antiques, I watched a lot of those shows like Salvage Hunters, American Pickers and uh, uh, shows like that. And they always say, uh, one of the greatest things is the people that you meet along the road and I think yeah, right The interesting thing is finding something really cool and being excited about what you're getting uh, But yesterday uh, I arrived to pick up this next item that I'm gonna show you and uh, As soon as I arrived it was like this um, uh, I, They call them old German houses, so this part of Poland for a long time Part of its history was uh, part of Germany and so German people lived here and they built these uh, large stone houses with large um, horse stables and outbuildings and stuff and so those areas are still standing today they were made to last for centuries uh, let me get away from these birds they're super loud and uh, it was really cool kind of European German old uh, like homestead and uh, I pulled up, I found the item on a local online marketplace and I pulled up and uh, there was a young couple there. They were like super nice and their mom who was there. And as soon as I got there, they invited me into the house and uh, first uh, I said, yeah, I kind of got to get going. But she's like, their mom was like, no way. You're going to sit down and have some coffee. So I said, okay, I'm going to sit down and have some coffee. Uh, and then donuts came out. And then uh, fresh cherries from their orchard came out. And then strawberries came out. And I got all kinds of information about uh, that German history there. And then I got to see their metal detectors that they had and some of the uh, treasures that they had found locally and uh, learned a lot about the dangers of that in this area because there's still unexploded ordnance. If you go around with a metal detector sticking a bayonet or a knife in the ground, uh, you might get a nasty surprise. But... Uh, yeah, it was so nice and uh, I kind of, in that moment, kind of recognized that uh, there's a lot of value in that. It was really kind of a cool experience. So uh, I'm looking forward to that kind of thing again in the future. And uh, yeah, it was really awesome. So that brings me to the item or items that I, I got there. And uh, they are pretty cool, very unique. So let's check that out. Okay, so this is a Soviet-era elementary school uh, educational teaching aid. And it's a gigantic uh, board that has uh, musical notes on it. And as you'll notice here up in the corner, there's a speaker on it. And there's actually a power button down here and some microphone inputs. It's from 1983, which is seven years before the uh, end of communism in Poland. Uh, there are these uh, metal tabs at each note and uh, those tabs are all wired up to a small circuit board in the back 
and connected to that speaker. So the teacher would have like a kind of wooden stick with a piece of metal on it. They would touch the note and it would complete the circuit, I guess with the ground or something. I'm, I'm not great at electronics. But anyway, once that note was touched, the corresponding note would uh, play. So you see here it says, uh, Sol, La, Si, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La. I think that's a little bit different than I remembered in Polish. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Da. Uh, but uh, yeah, the uh, actual note and then uh, the representation of the note above there. And uh, it's pretty gigantic. Uh, let me give you a quick uh, uh, shot for recognizing the scale of, of this piece. So it would be great for a loft apartment or a restaurant or a, you know somebody who needed a major statement piece uh, on their wall. And it's you know really curious, super unique, and you won't find another one. They also gave me for free, it was a really nice gift. Uh, they knew I was into stuff from Cold War era and uh, they had these little plastic keepsake things that were kind of like a tchotchke back then and uh, they're kind of recognizable and uh, they gave it to me for free which was pretty cool really neat little thing so kind of gives some variety in the stuff that I have available so it's pretty cool super nice of them honestly So uh, one thing that uh, kind of surprised me was uh, once you show up to buy something from somebody, they usually have other stuff that they're willing to sell. So uh, I did find a couple of small things. Uh, as a matter of fact, the place where I got these cards here, uh, the guy has these really long ones, like the ones you would see in the hotel that have the uh, place for luggage down below. and. Um, you know the, the hanging rack above he's got some very heavy-duty steel ones and they don't look too industrial they're like between decorative and uh, industrial and they look really cool and uh, I just didn't have enough room in the van but uh, he said $25 just like those so uh, those are definitely gonna come home with me pretty soon so he said he's gonna hold them for me and I'm gonna be back uh, there were a couple other things that I'll show you here that uh, I picked up This is a, a butcher's block. Um, it's got some ultra heavy gauge steel on that. And uh, it's super heavy. It's like really packed hard wood. And uh, it is super heavy. Um, I need to get a rotary wire brush and clean this off. Uh, maybe sand it down just a little bit and uh, lacquer it. And uh, it'll look really good. Uh, the one problem it does have is woodworm. So. Uh, there's a couple things I can do. I can leave that out this winter here in a Polish winter. It gets extremely cold and it will uh, take care of that. Or uh, I'll have to do some kind of pesticide and then wax the holes. But uh, uh, I'll definitely get that taken care of first. So he had one of these and told me that uh, this is the same guy that the carts came from. He told me that uh, he's got a bunch of these and he said that he would sell them for 10 bucks each. So. Uh, I thought that was a pretty good deal. I bought one and he said he'll see how many more he can get together. So, yeah. Pretty cool old industrial chair there. Yeah. And then uh, the last two things that I picked up were some cast iron lamp brackets for mounting lamps and uh, this one is it's got the bolt holes that would go right onto the wall and then those old gas station porcelain enamel and uh, porcelain enamel lampshades would uh, go right there so that's pretty cool that just needs to be wire brushed and cleaned up and lacquered uh, drill out that old there's some wire still stuck in there and uh, run the wire through there and that is ready to go right above somebody's door and here's another cool one. This is a handmade one. This came from a German factory. It's got uh, German factory markings there, 250 volts. So that's European electricity. Still got the enamel socket in it. And uh, they split a piece of tubing and flayed them out like that. And uh, 
use that as a, that's a pretty cool way to do the bracket. I'll have to keep that in mind. Maybe if I ever do my own project in the future. Uh, and then like that porcelain enamel lamp would lampshade would uh, fit right under there. And uh, it's designed to bolt right onto the wall there. So let me see if I can back up and give you a better sense of what it looks like there. So, oh, yeah, so that lampshade would go right there and uh, also go right over an old barn door or even somewhere in your house. So uh, those were kind of cool, uh, pleasant surprises. I didn't really pay much. One cool thing about Poland is that uh, there are lots of these old houses, even houses that aren't so old. Uh, they have gardens and they never want to throw anything away. So you can find cool old stuff Basically, at any house I go to along the street, uh, go in the garden and you can find cool stuff. There's old wire baskets there. Uh, look at those big iron wheels from, a, uh, I think that's for grinding grain, I think. And uh, here is a, uh, I don't know if you can see that or not, it's an old wheelbarrow. And uh, none of that stuff gets thrown away, so if you're kind of into that rustic country type stuff uh, there is an unlimited supply of that anywhere you go here so there's just one other thing i wanted to show you and uh this is another one of those kind of surprising things that i found i paid very little for this this is a mid-century modern uh stool he said it's bakelite i don't think it's bakelite uh i have another friend that i uh watch his channel and he does lots of videos about testing Bakelite and uh, informational videos about Bakelite. And I don't think this is it. I'm gonna have to get the uh, paste that he recommends, do a test on it and find out. But uh, it is from the 70s. There's a maker's mark there. Uh, didn't really cost me very much at all. And uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. So there's a uh, soccer game going on over there. You can hear some of the fans kind of uh, doing their chants and then the neighbors clapping to get rid of all these really bothersome birds so oh yeah and one other thing that just came in the mail uh this is i don't know probably from the 90s and uh it's a sign that hung on the outside of a shop and it's double-sided and it's lit up on the inside and it's got like a 1950s or 60s style graphic or something uh, Mebloteca and yellow. So uh, I thought that was pretty neat. And it cost me, what was it, like $8, I think. And then plus shipping. So it's pretty big, double sided, it's lit, and it's got brackets for mounting to the wall. So uh, couldn't pass that up. That was pretty cool. Uh, everything I discussed today, uh, all this stuff. Uh, minus that rack right there, but the stuff that I discussed in the video today, the total price was <clears throat> $800 for all of it. So uh, I think that this 120 year old clothing rack here is worth that at least. So uh, hopefully we're on the right track. So that's it for today. Uh, keep following the channel and uh, if you have any questions if you're interested in sourcing stuff from Europe uh, reach out to me send me a message through YouTube and uh, I will do my best to get an answer for you so uh, hopefully I've mentioned this I know for quite some time haven't got around to it yet but I want to do some interviews with uh, freight forwarders uh, <clears throat> customs brokers uh, nail down that process of actually sending the stuff because that's going to be happening later this year for me and uh, I haven't really moved in that direction quite yet because um, uh, I don't have enough to fill the container so it's super expensive I'm actually going to make a video about uh, how much it really costs for the different options <clears throat> less than container load 20 foot container and a 40 foot container and uh, some of the challenges in doing this so uh, Stay tuned and thanks for watching the video guys. Uh, I will talk to you soon